Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the ways in which listening, and just listening, but listening really effectively, can dramatically help other people. So one thing that I see a lot in life is I see people who are struggling with a lot of problems. In some cases someone might be depressed, from mildly depressed to severely depressed, and in other cases people may just be frustrated, like they're dealing with some sort of situation involving people, or involving other circumstances in their life that isn't working for them, and they feel like it's not going where they want it to be going. And one thing that I see happen a lot is that when people talk to other people, either people who are depressed or people who are just dealing with some sort of problem, they often tend to offer a lot of advice or try to solve the other person's problems. Now I think advice has its role in life. I think that sometimes advice can be really helpful, and sometimes I think people have helped me to solve my problems by giving me new ideas. But I think just launching into unsolicited advice giving, or trying to solve someone's problems, is not always the best approach. And there are a lot of different reasons why. Sometimes people don't want advice. That's sometimes true of me. It's, I think, often true of other people that I interact with. Uh, I found that when I offer unsolicited advice, it doesn't always come across very well. But I think there's another problem here, which is that when people are just launching into giving advice, they often haven't taken the full amount of time and effort necessary to really understand what's going on with the other person. So in a sense, they're not listening as effectively as they could be. I think listening often takes a lot more effort than people realize. Language can be complex, and like when people talk to each other, there are a lot of words that have like different meanings for different people. I see it especially when people talk about religion, like if you have different denominations even within Christianity, people use the same word and they'll kind of refer to different concepts. But it's also true of emotions, like when we talk about feelings, I find when I'm talking about my feelings, it's sometimes hard for me to put my feelings into words. I'll be like, well I have an icky feeling about this, am I sad, am I frustrated, I don't know all the time, and sometimes I need to actually talk on and on at length or write in a journal to figure out what I'm really feeling. So when people are talking to you about a problem, I think it's important to be mindful of the difficulties in language, and be mindful of the fact that your first impression of what someone is telling you might not be exactly what's going on with them. So if you want to listen more effectively, I think you need to go a little bit deeper. I think you need to take time to process what people have said, and I think you need to interact with them more. One thing that I think is really important is active listening. So instead of just sitting there and being like, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, and things like that, I think it's important to engage with what the person's saying. So like the person is like, hey, this happened, and then try to paraphrase it, say it back to them in your own words. And in some cases they'll be like, yeah, that's it, that's what's going on with me. And in other cases they might be like, no, I don't think you have it quite right, like, no, I think you're misunderstanding. And I think that step of paraphrasing back to them, so that they have the opportunity to see if you understood them or not, that step is critically important for good listening. So why is good listening important? Obviously it's important if you want to understand what's going on with someone. But I think there is a great transformative power that listening can have on people. One thing I've noticed a lot is that when people are in a bad place mentally, and this has been true of myself, and it's been true of other people in my life, when they're in a bad place, they're often surrounded by people who are not listening well. So like when I hear people talking about frustration with other people, it's almost almost always they express some degree to which other people don't seem to be understanding them, or are just not listening to them at all, or seem to be misunderstanding them. So um, if you're listening to someone else, I think it's important to think of the way in which your act of listening is setting an example for them, and it might be an example that they don't have much of in their life. Like if someone has a problem in their family that other people are not listening to them, then when they're at home, they're surrounded by this behavior of people not listening effectively. So when you listen to them, you're giving them a kind of positive and healthy counterexample, something to kind of latch onto. And I think that can have a real transformative power because 
they can see the techniques you're using with them and they can then imitate them. They might even do it unconsciously without thinking about it actively. And that can then transform their relationships with people. Because one thing I found again and again is that when I listen to someone else really effectively and I understand them, it often induces them to listen to me. So listening can be like a really important precursor to uh, being able to get what I want from someone. Like if someone is doing something that I don't like, listening can be an effective way to get through to them. So I hope I've communicated the importance of listening and given you something a little bit concrete about how to listen more effectively, how to check to see that your messages have been received. I'd love to hear from you. If you have anything to add, something you like or dislike about what I say, please, uh, please share. And I really appreciate when people share my videos and when people subscribe to my channel. So if you like what I have to say, please consider doing that too. Thank you.